Hi everyone and welcome to our quick video tutorial today on dynamic rates. The dynamic rate feature is an amazing tool to use. It really increases your opportunities to bring in a bit more revenue throughout the year. You can set a minimum price and a maximum price and NewBook will automatically jump the pricing up based on occupancy. So if guests get in quick when you're at a lower occupancy level, they'll pay the cheapest price and then it will gradually start to increase based on the demand of bookings that drop into your NewBook system. For those of you who are new to completing rates set up within your new book system, we do recommend that you first watch our basic rate overview video, which goes through the four steps that are required to set up in the new book system to implement your rates successfully. Now, when it comes to using our dynamic rate functionality, in order to activate this, you need to select from the dynamic rate options. If you'd like your dynamic rates to feed through to your new book online page and potentially your third party booking channel such as booking.com, you'll need to select online and interface. If for any reason you only want them online or only want them within the new book interface, you do have those options as well. So we're going to select online and interface. Once selected, you'll see that the rate base price section reloads and we have these three areas for us to fill in. The first area is our dynamic minimum. So this is as low as we are willing to go with the pricing. As an example, I'm going to place in here $200. Next, we have our dynamic max. So this is the highest price any guest is going to pay. So if they are booking when we have one more luxury villa left, they will most likely be paying the premium amount. So let's say that's $275. Now the last area is really important. It's your dynamic base. And think of this section as the price that you would have charged as a flat rate if you weren't going to use your dynamic rate option. So if I know that I generally would have charged a $200 flat rate, I'm going to place this in here. This area is integral as it is what we use in order to actually calculate how much money you've made by using or implementing your dynamic rate structure. So we have a dynamic rate report that you're able to use. And if this area is not filled out, you're not going to be able to see the increase in revenue that you've bought in. Now that we've set our dynamic rate pricing, on the right, we then have some options as to how you would like NewBook to calculate this pricing. We have our dynamic method. So we have two options, off peak and peak. If you hover over the little toggle here, it'll tell you what sort of scaling they use. So Off-Peak uses a linear scale for price calculation. So that essentially is quite a gradual increase and works in a linear line. Whereas the peak option is more of an exponential scale for price calculation, which means it stays a bit closer to the baseline initially, and then it peaks a little bit more aggressively towards the end when your occupancy is um, increasing. So there's higher jumps if you use the peak option. Off peak is more gradual and even. We then have our dynamic occupancy calculation. So there are three options here, and this is what tells NewBook which specific occupancy percentage it should be looking at to then base its increases on the dynamic rate. To give you a bit more of an idea, I'm actually gonna preview some of these options so you can get a visual representation of this. So if we click preview dynamic calculation, it allows us to basically test or have a bit of insight into what the pricing will look like if we use these options. So it pulls through our pre-filled details. At the minute, we're going to preview the off-peak method and I'm going to show you the dynamic occupancy at a category level. So when we have that set here, we then need to preview it with a specific category. So because I'm looking at my luxury villas and that's the rate that I'm setting up, I'm going to select this and then preview. So as it's on the off peak, it's on the linear scale. So again, it's got that really steady gradual increase. It's telling us that out of the eight villas that we have available to book, the first one will pay the cheapest price at 200. The last booking that is placed or the eighth villa that is booked will then pay that premium amount at the 275. If you'd like to preview it with the peak option, simply change and then preview you'll see that this is more of a exponential scale. So it's keeping closer to that baseline initially, and then it jumps up a little bit more aggressively. So we can see it stays closer to that base price and minimum, and then it starts increasing towards the end here. 
If you'd like to have new book increase the rate based off of the category type occupancy total, simply click here and then you'll need to update the preview option to select the category type that you've got set up with a new book. I've got one called Villas because I have luxury villas and I also have family villas. And what I want new book to do is basically, if I've got no bookings in my family villa, but I start getting bookings in my luxury villas, I would like the pricing on the family villas to go up anyway because they are essentially the same kind of accommodation type and I really want to yeah, increase the revenue opportunities by using the dynamic rate functionality. So if I preview this, instead of it just looking at my eight luxury villas, it's actually looking at my 22 overall villas that I have in the system. And you'll see the pricing has a larger amount to calculate off. So the increase is going to be a little steadier regardless of whether we do peak or off peak. And again, you can chop and change to preview what the pricing is going to do, but that is another great option. The last one, again, this is instant. So this is just your overall occupancy at your property on any given day. So today we're gonna to stick with category and I'm just going to update the rate to make sure it follows those settings. One last setting that you have as well is a minimum occupancy. So this is a way of restricting when you want new book to start bumping that pricing up. So if you want to give guests the opportunity to still pay that cheaper price for a little bit longer, you can pop in here that you want to only start increasing your dynamic rates once your category hits 10% occupancy. So they get the cheaper price for longer. Now that we've configured all of our dynamic rate settings, we would then go through and complete any of our other rate options, such as our advanced rate options tab, where we can select minimum nights. We would also have a look at the amount of people that may be included in this cost. We would move down to the additional occupant pricing tab to set additional prices for extra guests. And we would also ensure that we include anything like our deposit rules or adjustment fees for those cancellation fees that guests may incur when they cancel a booking. And once we're happy with all of those settings, we would then simply select save rate. Now that a rate is created, we can now go and apply that to our style of accommodation. So at the bottom of the page here, we have an add applied rate here. When I click on this, this is what will allow me to connect the dots. So I select what rate type this falls under. So it's a standard price. It's pulled through our dynamic rate, and on the right-hand side, I'm going to specify that that is for my luxury villa category and what period it is for. So what specific dates does this cover? Once I've selected these, I can then save. Alternatively, I can continue and press save another to apply the remaining dynamic rates that I may have left to complete. Once saved, it will take us to our rates chart where we can see it successfully created one applied rate. And if we have a look underneath, we can see our luxury villa style of accommodation. And you'll notice the standard rate that is currently applied. And if we hover over the date range, it's indicating that it has been applied to my high season. You will also notice the actual pricing on each day currently appears to be the same. And that is because we have zero occupancy. So we currently don't have any bookings staying on my luxury villas during these date ranges. So as soon as we start getting bookings, the rate will start jumping up. A quick way to identify that you have a dynamic rate activated at this point in time is when you can see that the text is slanted or in italics. Underneath, we have our stay seven, pay six, and you can see that's just standard text indicating it is just a standalone basic rate that has been set up. If we take a look at our bookings chart, you'll see some test bookings that are placed in here just to adjust the overall occupancy on various days. And we're going to quite clearly see that the price per night is going to fluctuate dependent on how busy it is on each day. If we have a look at our rates chart, you'll also be able to clearly see that the pricing is different on different days as well now that those occupancy calculations have gone up. As we now have our dynamic rates implemented, if for any reason we wanted to adjust what that minimum and maximum amount was, and only over a few dates, you can use the rates chart and head to the add new rate override feature. What I can do here is specify the dates that I would like to override, the category of accommodation and the rate type, 
And in my pricing override tab here, I can actually enforce a dynamic override. So this will ensure that I change the prices, however, it still utilizes that automation with the dynamic rate structure. So here I might say, you know what, I want to actually increase my minimum to be 210, my max to be 285. And again, the base should always be what your standard price was if you were to keep it on that static flat rate all year round. You've got your method and occupancy settings here. And then once you save, it'll take you back to the rates chart and you'll clearly be able to see that the rates have been overridden over those dates, but they still have the italic text, which indicates that it will still do that automated dynamic rate structure with those new minimum and maximum prices being taken into account. Once you've implemented your dynamic rate structure at your business, we highly recommend that you keep an eye on the dynamic pricing report. And this is great because it will gauge how much more income or revenue you're bringing in now that you've introduced this automated pricing that's going to increase based on demand and occupancy. So in our menu, if you're looking for this report, it's called your dynamic pricing report. Select the date that you'd like to look at and how you would like to group the information by category, type, or just by the rate. Run the report. And you'll see in this scenario it's showing my category type called villas, the dates, how many bookings I bought in, what I would have made if I had not implemented my dynamic rate structure. So if I just kept it at that flat fee for all of those bookings, this is what I would have bought in. But based on that new structure, this is what I actually made and this is how much more money I have bought in at my property. That does bring us to the end of our video tutorial today on dynamic rates. If you do have any questions or would like to learn a little bit more about this, remember to always click into the question mark icon on the top right corner and this will expand some recommended articles relating to the pages that you are visiting.